Hey guys, it's Bree here at Blossom and Branch and today I thought we'd do something a little different and we're going to go around the field and it's mid to late July. We are starting to get attacked by lots of different nibbling insects. So we're gonna go around and we're gonna pick some of the things that maybe don't necessarily look great, but we're still gonna make a beautiful bouquet with them. So what I wanna show you is that it's okay if your flowers don't look perfect, they can still look beautiful, especially when they're all together. So we're gonna start here at our echinacea. Now a lot of this echinacea still looks fine, but there's a couple that are getting some spots on them. And echinacea is really unique because actually, even if it's starting to get some spotting like this, even if we pull off the petals, we'll get a really neat, interesting architectural seed pot here. So let's go ahead and cut this one. So even though those petals Maybe it didn't look so great. And then I always strip my leaves out here in the field just so that they can break down and decompose right into the soil. I'm gonna grab a couple of those. I'll grab these ones that are also looking a little worse for wear. Pull some of these off. This is some chamomile that has reseeded itself here into this spot where we actually didn't want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of it because that way we'll keep it from reseeding. But chamomile, even when it's starting to be spent, makes this really interesting little cute yellow dancy shape, which I really like to have in a bouquet, especially sitting up high, it gives us some movement. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these back. So even though this chamomile is really past and the white petals are starting to droop, we're gonna go ahead and use it. You could save these leaves that I'm stripping off you can use chamomile leaves for teas if you wanted to. I have no plan for what this is gonna look like, so we'll just have to find out together. But we do wanna strip off as many of the leaves as we can on the lower part of the stem so that it doesn't make the water dirty. Let's move on, we'll go grab something else. Here you have some dahlias that are just getting close to bloom but not quite there yet. The yarrow is actually looking pretty good. So I think I'll cut a little bit of yarrow. Yarrow is really impervious to pests. If you're looking for one, if you have a lot of pests that do damage in the garden, you might wanna try some yarrow because it's really seems to hold up well to pests and nibbling of insects and it attracts a lot of beneficials. Down here we have Rudbeckia. This is another pollinator favorite. You can see how they're just swarming all over this. And Rudbeckia is one that we like to wait until it's a little bit more mature to harvest. So there's a fine line between wanting it to be sturdy enough so that it passes what we call the wiggle test, that we can do this and it doesn't flop around. Look at this little guy, he is covered in pollen. So sometimes what happens is because we're waiting for it to get old enough to harvest and for it to hold in a vase, it gets a little bit too far. So that's happened here with some of these and then leaves start to get nibbled on. But we're gonna go ahead and pick some of them anyway. Really, we're so obsessed with perfect looking produce and flowers, but really at the end of the day, they don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And I'm taking off any side shoots that are a little more immature because those will probably wilt. Let's go find some dahlias because I know those have been getting nibbled. So down here are our dahlias. Now I've been out of town for a week. They've been blooming a little bit longer than I normally would like them to. But what we do is when we have a lot of pests, like we do with the dahlias, especially are very prone to things like grasshoppers and earwigs is we bag them. So we just use these organza bags over the top. So these ones, some of these are protected, but you can see that they are starting to brown toward the back. And this just happens as the dahlias get a little bit older. I'm gonna deadhead those, but I am gonna cut some that aren't looking so hot, that are maybe looking a little bit on the older side and some that have pest damage. Let's go down to the end and see how those ones are looking. For some reason, that end of the field tends to get worse nibbling. We can see that this one, oh, <laughs> that's what they do. This one has started to be nibbled here on the edges. So we have two choices with this dahlia. We could either deadhead this one and let these two bl buds bloom, or we could pick this. I'm gonna go ahead and deadhead this because it's in the middle. Down here, you can see we have some earwigs nesting in here. They've been doing a little bit of nibbling on these leaves. It's okay, I'm still gonna cut some. I'm telling you, you're really not gonna notice when we're done making the bouquet. I always cut my dahlias fairly long, so I like to cut them at least as long as my elbow to my fingertip, just because that helps keep them producing longer stems. And that's especially true of this variety, which is called one-eyed jill. It tends to get really tall, so we really cut them down nice and deep so that they don't get too lanky. So a little bit of nibbling, but still overall pretty. <laughs> All right, and last but not least, we're gonna head down to the roses. Roses are one of our biggest 
pest issues, especially this time of year, because usually what we have is a lot of Japanese beetles. This may be true for you too. So what we do is we just regularly deadhead them. So if we're starting to get a lot of Japanese beetles, I will just come in and deadhead them regularly so that we're not attracting more of them. But for now, let's look and see if we can find some. Yep, these ones have a little bit of damage, but it's not too bad. It's not so bad that it would keep me from using the rose. You can see there's some pieces taken out of the petals. This actually might be from leaf cutter bees. The other thing you can do if you are getting a lot of pest damage on your roses and you wanna harvest them is cut them early. So you can see this one, I'm cutting when it's still quite tight before it has started to open. That way we're kind of just getting to it before <laughs> the bugs do, which is another way to kind of ward off damage. And I just nip off all these thorns with my clippers. I'm surprised actually how few Japanese beetles we have this year. Usually we have a lot. They don't seem to be that many this year. So you can see if you let the roses go, they really get quite, quite eaten. So cutting them sooner than later will help with that. I think let's just grab some snapdragons. Now we have some snapdragons that we've let go a little bit longer than ideal for harvesting because this is a bouquet for me. I'm not so worried about it. And they'll still have a good base life. They'll still last probably about six days to a week in a vase, even if they're a little bit on the older side. Here are the snaps. We actually usually like to harvest them before they're fully open. So these ones have almost opened all the way up the stem. So we have them fully open up here at the top. So again, I would not harvest these to sell, but for myself, they're still absolutely fine. And I do cut them pretty far down the stem as well so that we can get a rebloom hopefully and that rebloom won't be short. If we cut too high up on the stem, oftentimes the second flush of snapdragons can just be too short. This variety is Madame Butterfly. So you can see it has kind of these ruffly layers of petals. And this is Madame Butterfly Cherry Bronze, which some years looks more orange, some years looks more pinky. I think it just depends. It comes down oftentimes to the temperatures that we're getting. You can see the variations in them kind of are almost a sunset color and it's getting hot. So we'll go make our bouquet. Let's head to the barn. So you can see, even though, again, these flowers are not all at their peak, they're gonna come together and still be beautiful. So I'm gonna start by crisscrossing my stem. I always start my bouquets this way and that's especially true when I'm gonna be putting them in a wide mouth vase like this one because I don't want them to be flopping out all over the place. So I will start here with my snaps and I'm gonna go into an X shape this way. And now this is just kind of a take on a spiral bouquet. So there's another way of building bouquets in which you use a spiral technique. You insert a stem and then you rotate your hand. This is just a way that is a little bit more simple for people to understand. I have found as we've been teaching classes, I have just found that people connect to this X shape idea a little bit better. I have a nice loosely cupped hand. You can see how I'm holding these stems. I kind of am spreading out my fingers and I'm holding them in there. So I'm just gonna continue adding all my stems and I'm just gonna keep doing that same shape. And then I just kind of add in as I go. So I'm just continuing to add in. You can see I'm going at an angle with these stems. This way, then that way, then this way, then this way. And as you build and you get more and more stems in here, it just gets a little bit denser. So you do have to be mindful that you're not gripping your hand, nice loosely cupped hand. And also this is where it can get difficult if you have a lot of flowers, because it can start to get difficult to hold. Dancy chamomiles there some roses make sure i don't stab myself here sometimes you have to hold it out a little bit and see how things are looking all right so i'm building a 360 degree bouquet so it, that means it looks good from the front and from the back because depending on where we're going to put this bouquet if we put it if we make it just one-sided it's going to be better for something like a hall table if we build it all the way around then we can put it in the middle of it dining table or on the kitchen table. If you have a hole in the bouquet, you can always thread something in through the top. So at this point, as I'm just adding things in on the sides, I kind of have a little bit of a hole. So I'll take these flowers and I'm gonna kinda pop them in here. And then as they come out the bottom, I just grab the stem and pull it in. And then that way, if I have a hole, I can fill it in without ruining the rest of the structure. So here we have our peachy bouquet. 
Now at this point, I would be cutting down the stems. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my clippers. And then I'm just gonna use rubber bands. I use two rubber bands so that they don't break. Now I have very simply wrapped my stems with a craft paper wire. You could also do a ribbon if you choose to. I just like to use this craft paper wire because it holds really well and it doesn't get water stained when it's in the vase. So now you could use this as a hand tied bridal bouquet or you can put it into a vase. So you may need to cut it down just a little bit to fit into a vase, which is what I've actually already gone ahead and done. It's just trimmed these stems just a little bit more and now it'll pop right into my face. And because we've built it wide, like we mentioned at the beginning, so that X shape and it's going nice and kind of almost flat here at this level, it's going to sit and nest into this base quite nicely. And now we have a centerpiece or a hand tied bouquet. All right guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial today and I hope that you've maybe taken the lesson that the flowers don't have to look perfect. It is okay if they've had a little bit of pest damage, if they've been nibbled on a little bit, we can always tweak flowers and the more we put together, the less your eye is drawn to the damage. You really can't see any on this bouquet at all. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and remember to like and subscribe. It really does help us out a lot here at the farm. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.